In this tutorial, we're going to take a bunch of images and turn it into a texture atlas in an automated way. By the way, after I finish recording, I made the algorithm even better so it packs even more tightly. This video is sponsored by RenderGate, which is a render farm, but we're going to talk about that later. So here are some images I found from the internet. I was just kind of going for like abandoned wood shed thing. And I want to extract little sections of it, like this piece of wood, maybe this door, whatever. Chewbox Texture Ripper is the best thing for this. Just download this, which means you're also going to have to download Adobe Air for Windows or Mac. All those links can be found on my website. And we're going to start by taking one image at a time and extracting textures, and then I'm going to show you a tool that will combine all of them together. I'm just going to zoom in and take textures that I like. So I like this broken glass thing, so I'm just going to click these four kind of corner pin things, and now we have that texture. By the way, if you have like a curved texture like this barrel, what you can do is you can make this kind of quad here, and then to capture the curvature of this barrel, you just drag down one of the edges, and you can uh, flatten a curved texture, so something like that. And now you can see we flatten this barrel texture. By the way, the bigger the tile, the bigger this is going to be in our atlas, but let's say that's everything we want from this image, and we want to move on. Well, unfortunately, Shoebox doesn't let you add more images to build your atlas. I'm going to show you a workaround, but for now we're going to save the texture. Make sure you do this as a PNG. So I'm going to call this textures1.png. This is important because I want the transparency in between the islands. And then I'm going to move on to the next image. I'll do one more with you and then I'll kind of speed through it. So I definitely like this. The wood is so old that it honestly like has its own like curvature. So we can actually kind of assume that this has a tiny bit of curvature. And again, when you're happy with all the textures you extracted, just save textures. Notice by the way that this packing is not optimal. There's a lot of empty space. Okay, so I did our extraction and we have a bunch of texture atlases, you're going to notice they're different resolutions, which makes sense <laughs> because our original images had different resolutions and I want to combine them and pack them in an efficient way that preserves the resolution of each tile. Well, to do this, I whipped together a bit of a script with the help of ChatGPT, go to this on my website, and it's going to give you two options. The first one is an executable if you have Windows. If you have Mac or you don't trust that, there's a Python file. And once you have it, I'm going to show you the exe version first. You're just going to launch it. It's going to open up this dialog and you just pick all the textures that you want. So in this case, I want these five images. You click open. So I'm going to call this textures output as a PNG by default, but you can see it's already done. It went pretty quick and it took everything from every single image and fairly optimally put it in a um, grid. It's not the best, but you're going to see that this maintained the resolution of every tile, even these tiny ones that have a low resolution. If instead you want the Python version, you're going to open this file. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code F5 to run this code for Python. So this is a bit more of a technical version. You're going to give this a second. And if you run into an error like this, which you probably will by default, we import CV2 and we go down this list. So we need OS, NumPy, PIL, whatever. We just need to install it. So you're going to do pip install, and then the name for CV2 happens to be OpenCV-Python instead of just CV2. And now we're going to try to run it again, and we'll see if we're missing anything else. Nope, that turns out to be it. This opens up the same thing, but now it's just via like a Python script that you could run on Linux, Mac, whatever. Let me model something with this. I'm just going to make a shed looking thing. So I know it ain't beautiful, but the point is it doesn't matter because we can just get away with all this detail with textures. I'm going to make a material. For that material, I'm going to import in our atlas, put this into the height, connect this to this, make the strength lower. So first thing you're going to notice is it's black. Doesn't make much sense. Yes, but that's because we need to do our uh, UV mapping. So I'm just going to take a section of this. So let's say kind of the front of this, and I can now put it over like anything and it will use that texture. So for this section, I can say use like this piece of wood. Obviously, for this uh, piece of door, it would make sense to use this part of the texture, part of this like broken window. You know, ideally, you've just collected enough textures to begin with. And if you're getting stretching over here, all you have to do is kind of select this section, click reset so that these UV tiles are huge, and then you could just sample like a different part. So like maybe this like wood over here or whatever. I'm going to select all of these shift click the thing control l link materials if i can find it and now they all have this like material and we can just as easily do a project from view and say that this piece of wood is going to be this piece of texture right here i know ian huber talks about this a lot where you can take little pieces of this and use k for the knife tool and you can see the texture kind of defines this panel here that we can so to extrude so that it kind of matches our texture i would just use extrude manifold and just punch out and so with this one so let me pick a hdri for the lighting maybe it can be a nighttime scene and you can get again like a good bump of detail by using this like normal map. In this case, this is so aged that it would make sense to do something like this. Use a noise texture object coordinates, and I'm going to use this to just kind of put a layer of dirt over this. So high detail and high roughness to get this kind of dirt look. I'm going to mix color with this new one. Set it to multiply if you want it to darken. And this is now before and after. It just blends everything together quite nicely, in my opinion. And there we go. We have our shed. And that is only think to that is only thanks to uh, this texture atlas. Okay, so thank you for watching. And as I said, this video is sponsored by RenderGate. This is the RenderGate website where you can upload your blend and basically render it much faster than you'd be able to, especially if the scene is pretty heavy. You can see the pricing here. Of course, I'm going to use GPU. And this is the scene I'm going to render from that short film I made. You can see it's pretty volumetric and pretty heavy where you have a bomb and a bubble falling. Make sure your data is packed. going to render this as a PNG sequence, no compression, don't need to give it a name, and upload it to RenderGate. So select file, skybomb.blend. Okay, so it's doing some calculation and ideally it tells us how much it costs with a bunch of parameters. Ready to render, start render. Okay, so it's estimated 
estimating that this is going to take a dollar and a half. You can see here are all our parameters. I'm going to click ready to render and you can make an account and get $25 free, which easily covers this shot. So log in, start render. Okay. And here you can see it's rendering. And the beauty of this is I can just step away and go pee. So I'll be right back. Okay. So I actually modified the blend file. So I had to re-upload, but you can see the price is basically the same and the render is done in four minutes. Okay. We just download. Here is the zip file and inside. Perfect. That is exactly what I expect. It is a dark render because that's what the scene was like. This is going to be a bigger deal for bigger projects, or if you just need something faster than your computer. And additionally, RenderGate wants you to know that they are half as expensive and twice as fast as most other render farms that do Blender files. There's going to be a link in the description and thank you for watching.